Okay, just going to do a video refuting, defining and refuting hyperdispensationalism. There's a lot of confusion on what a hyperdispensationalist is. I'm going to show you what a true hyperdispensationalist is and also how to refute it. Because there's the common misconception that dispensational salvation, which is what the Word of God teaches, is hyperdispensationalism. No, it's not. Okay, this is Wikipedia about hyperdispensationalism, subject on the section of general views. And this is what a hyper this is what a true hyper dispensationalist believes. Again, this is not dispensational salvation. It says hyper dispensationalists are not monolithic or homogeneous. The two main positions, as well as other, as well as a few minor variations, uh, the two main sorry there are two main positions. The, the two main positions are Acts nine and Acts thirteen. Okay, what is Acts nine? Acts chapter nine is when the Apostle Paul was converted by Jesus Christ, when he saw Jesus Christ and was converted. It's Acts chapter 9. What is Acts chapter 13? Acts chapter 13 is when Paul was ordained and got into ministry. Paul was sent out to be a minister. That's Acts 13, verses 1 to 3. So they'll say, basically, I'll, I'll explain as we go on, the differences are minor being only technical. They see they all see the dispensation of grace. Again, not the biblical term. There's no term dispensation of grace. The the term dispensation of grace is just simply saying that God dispenses grace. Okay? The proper term would be the time of the Gentiles, or you could say, you know, times of the Gentiles, you find that term. Uh, but there's no term dispensation of grace. Uh they just wanted to say that. It's a description, God dispenses his grace, but it's not the title. Okay? Just wanted to clear that out. Okay. Proper term, I like to say, is time of the Gentiles, because right now God's dealing with the Gentile nations. Uh, again, I'm not going to go too much into that. They all see the dispensation of grace, which is the church age, beginning with the Apostle Paul. Also within the movement is found the King James-only elements, associated mainly with the teachings of Richard Jordan and Grace School of the Bible, while Acts 2, the Acts 2 position ties to distances, tries to distance itself, is more consistent with uh, with, with from its more consistent dispensational brothers, as well as ultra dispensationalism, starts the church after Acts 28. Acts 28 is the end of the book of Acts. Uh, they are all true dispensationalists and fully ev evangelical, uh, still tending towards fundamentalism. Furthermore, the differences separating mid -act, the mid-Acts position from the Acts 28 position are just as great as those separating the Acts 2 position uh, from its more consistent mid-Acts dispensational brothers. Okay, So what a hyper-dispensationalist is, is basically someone who says there's, there's no body of Christ before Paul. They'll either go to Acts 9 when Paul got, Paul got converted, or Acts 13 when Paul was sent out, got into ministry, basically. And this is obviously heresy. There is There were people who were in Christ before Paul. Okay, That's what a hyper-dispensationalist is. A hyper-dispensationalist is someone who believes there's two bodies of Christ, and that nobody was in the body of Christ now before Paul. Okay, That is heresy. So dispensational salvation is not hyper-dispensationalism. Okay? Here's a good verse to use against, I'm going to show you some scripture refuting hyper-dispensationalism. Because understanding now that dispensational salvation is what the Bible teaches. Hyper-dispensationalism is saying there's no one in Christ before Paul. Here's a good verse to refute them on that. Romans 16, 7. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who were, no, who were of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. So there were people who were in Christ before Paul. Okay, this is a good verse that refutes hyper-dispensationalism, true hyper-dispensationalism. Another good verse to use against it is Acts 5, Acts chapter 5, verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. What does it mean to be added to the Lord? You're saved. You're part of the body of Christ. So there were people who were part of Christ's body before Paul, okay? What's going on with Paul is that the gospel was not fully revealed until Paul, okay? Let me show you that. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, Paul is the apostle, the apostle of the Gentiles, you can see Romans 11, 13, and Romans 15, 16. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you were. Again, dispensation of the grace of God is not the title. It's a description. God's dispensing his grace to Paul. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery 
as, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now what is this message that was revealed to the apostles? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Notice something, we're partakers, okay? This is not, this th does refute replacement theology, because replacement theology says that we replace Israel. No, we're just partakers of the promise of Christ. We don't replace Israel. Just wanted to quickly mention that, because, you know, it, replacement theology, replacement theology heretics will say, oh, we replace Israel. No, we're partakers. We don't replace Israel. Uh, verse 7, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Okay? The gospel of grace, the, the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20, 24, was not fully revealed until the apostle Paul. Okay? There was salvation. There were people who were in Christ before Paul. But the gospel was not fully revealed to Paul. And, and God used Paul to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Okay? Let me show you that. Acts chapter 9. In verse 15. Sorry, I got something in my eye. I think a fruit fly just went in my eye. Annoying, my room has a lot of fruit flies in it. Acts 9, 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and the kings, and the children of Israel. So Paul was going to bear Jesus' name before the Gentiles. That was what Jesus Christ was using Paul for to give the, bring the gospel to the Gentiles. Uh, there was another verse. Here it is. Acts chapter 20, verse 21. And he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. So again, he's sending Paul to the Gentiles. Okay? So the gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20, 24, was fully revealed to Paul, and he was using it to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. That's what's going on there. Okay? This is not hyper-dispensationalism. This is what the Bible teaches. Hyper-dispensationalism, again, says there's nobody in Christ before Paul. Another fruit fly. Okay, Sorry, I just got to put this apple away. I was eating an apple. I'm just going to put it away. I think it's attracting fruit flies. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. just had to get that out of the way. So yeah, hyper-dispensationalism. So they say there's nobody in Christ before Paul. That's not what the Bible teaches, okay? The gospel was just not fully revealed to Paul. That's what the Bible teaches, okay? So don't be deceived. Hyper-dispensationalism is indeed a heresy, and dispensational salvation is what the Word of God teaches. It's not a heresy, okay? So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.